we want to determine the amplitude, period, and phase shift, as well as graph one cycle of y equals minus 2 cosine 2x plus pi plus 1. So remember, we need to write down our standard formula in order to solve this. So y is going to equal to a cosine bracket b times x minus c bracket plus d. So in order to use this form, I'm going to have to get the original that they gave me into that form. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite what they gave us. So minus 2 cosine times 2x plus pi plus 1. So I need to figure out a way to get the x all by itself. So I can copy down everything in front of the parentheses. Now to get that out, I'm going to take a 2 out in front. That's going to leave me with x plus. Now, what do I need to multiply pi, the 2 by, to get pi? Well, I'm going to have to multiply by pi over 2, close bracket, plus 1. So now it's in exactly the same form, so I can say, okay, I know what a is. a is going to be minus 2. b is 2. c is going to be minus pi over 2. And d is 1. So what does all that mean? Well, the amplitude is going to be minus 2. But is it a minus? Remember, it's always absolute value. So we know that what we're going to actually have to do is take the absolute value of minus 2, which will just give us 2. Now, b is 2, but that doesn't tell us anything, right? We actually have to use the period formula. So the period is 2 pi over b. And in our case, b is 2. So 2 pi over 2. So this is going to be pi. Remember C, that's your phase shift, so you know that this is going to occur from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And if this is a plus 1, we're going to shift it up 1 unit. So what I want you to do is, based on that now, I want you to actually graph it. Now if you want to make the t-table, you can do that, but you should be able to graph at least not exact numbers, but you should get pretty close based on just the information from A, B, C, and D. So when you graph it, it should be, of course, be much prettier than mine, but it should resemble just the up rise of the curve.